Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real. Good morning. A film podcast. I review all kinds of films of all genres, all nationalities, all kinds of running times, whether it's Oscar season, Cannes season, you name it. I got you today. Welcome to March. It's going to be a great, great month. I am reviewing my first Irish film called The Banshees of Inisherin. The 2022 black comedy film written, co-produced, and directed by Martin McDonough. He is a legend in the field of filmmaking, especially Irish slash English black comedies. He's also a playwright, a very successful playwright at that. You know, I'm not big into like the Tony Awards or plays or, you know, Broadway stuff, but when you see films that are like based off of a play you should you should watch those kind of films because it's more about the theatrics it's more about the acting than anything else and this film is a little bit no different and this film the banshees of inisherin it's it's a very unique film as far as how characters play out events in their boring everyday lives this film is the great example of how it may seem that one person's life is dull, but in fact, it's really not. This film is about two guys, right? Set in the island called Inisherin, which is off the mainland of Ireland, 1923, Civil War. You don't see the action, but you hear the action. And it's sort of a reference to the tension between these two men played by Colin Farrell and Brandon Gleason. Colin Farrell playing Patrick. I can't even pronounce his last name because it's so freaking Irish. I'm just going to do my best. Patrick Shulaban. There we go. And then the, the legendary Brandon Gleason playing Calm Daughtery. This film has a great cast. Whoever casted this film deserves an award or deserves to be nominated or deserves to have a SAG because... This film has a really good cast, and these cast of characters are so unique, and I love the way they interact with each other, which, if these characters are interacting with each other, it's because McDonough wrote those characters to be that way, and, if, and, being that, and that being the case, great screenplay, great screenwriting, great dialogue. It's a very simple film. It really is because, look, man, you're, you're in an island. You're in an island. It's 1923. There are no, you know, city paved roads. There's no street signs. There's only like a post office, one or two public houses or pubs, as they call them, a church. And that's pretty much all you see. And then like, people's cottages or homes you know and all of these people are like farmers and you know herders you know stuff like that musicians anyways to make the plot very very simple Patrick and calm apparently they were good buddies at least to Patrick's point of view and then one day calm's like you know what I don't want to be your friend no more I I just I don't like you and it's so random, especially in the first act, right? It's so random. And Patrick cannot take the news, you know, as it is. He thinks it's a joke. And it's funny because when Calm told him that, I think it was the day before, I think it was either April Fool's Day or the day before April Fool's Day. So when Patrick visits Calm at his home, because that's what he does almost every day, especially on Sundays at 2, that's like a tradition. Patrick goes up to Calm's house, hits him up at two. Like, hey, I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to get your drink. I'm going to be on my way. So be on your way. And they will get a pint of stout. And, oh, man, dude, this film, so much stout drinking. So much stout drinking. It makes me want to drink a stout when I watch the film. And in fact, I may rewatch the film again because I want to drink while I watch the film. And why not drink a Guinness? Doesn't seem like they're drinking a Guinness, but 
You know, it's pretty close that they are. Who knows, right? It's not said. Either way, this time, Calm's like, nope, I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. He doesn't give him too much of a reason why. He just pretty much flats out says it. And as the film goes on, there are reasons either told by the mouth or told by action that pretty much kind of sums up the reason why Calm doesn't want to be Patrick's friend. It may seem very selfish, but at the same time, this film deals with aging, loneliness, existentialism. It also deals with how people interact with each other, especially at a certain time of life, you know, where, I mean, imagine living in an island, dude, and there's really nothing to do, nothing to like you can't do like if you want to be something great it's like being there automatically holds you back from achieving greatness or achieving success and that's pretty much i mean not to spoil it but calm wants to be a success he plays the fiddle he's pretty good at it he writes tunes and he wants to be more than just a guy in an island writing and fiddling he wants to be more than that. And he thinks he needs to do certain things to be more than what he thinks he is. And Patrick, almost the complete opposite, you know, like, hey, man, like, what are you so worried about life? You know, like, I thought we had a good time, but people change, you know. Sometimes they change for the good, and sometimes they change for the worse. They start up bad, end up better, or vice versa. It's, it's, it's quite a life, like, so it's not like a life lesson or anything like that, but it's, it's, it's the certain things that you think about, you know? It's like, like a midlife crisis type of thing, you know? Life crisis, you know? Like, what do I do? Because even Patrick's sister, even she has a hard time, like, just living in an island. Like, she just wants to be more than what she's just doing there. And most of the time, she's reading books. Sometimes she's herding cows. Sometimes she's just running errands. Screw that. I, I, I want to be more than that. And then boom, she gets an opportunity. And she takes it. Patrick, really good character, played by Colin Farrell. Listen, not a big Colin Farrell fan. I don't really watch films that he's in, with the exception of Minority Report which he played a pretty good, not an antagonistic character, but, you know, he played a pretty good agent. Either way, I love his character because his perspective on life is, you know, people remember you by not what you did in life, but who you are, you know, how nice you were, you know. A lot of people like to think like that, you know, like, oh, I remember that man, that guy was a great guy. That guy was a good guy. That chick, dude, she was so nice. That lady. Every day she would make us coffee. She's so nice. People remember shit because of the nice things that people do. And what a pretty cool way to look at how you want to be remembered, right? Calm's different. Like, nah, screw that. Could be nice all you want. But Mozart created this. Beethoven created that. 200 years ago, 300 years ago, people still remember it. People are going to forget us, but they're not going to forget the creations of work that we created. This film is really good. It goes to drastic measures where Patrick just keeps on wanting to talk to this guy. This guy's his friend, or if anything, his best friend. And, and it just sucks when somebody tells you, I don't want to be your friend no more. And I will go through drastic lengths to make sure that my point is is good and clear and calm man you got to give it to his character he he literally puts his life on the line to get his point across and what's also great about this film is is that we don't really know what's going to happen next we may think we know but we really don't this film is really good at doing the opposite of spoon feeding it just leaves us like little clues 
or it just it gives us a little taste of what could be coming next and supporting characters in this film are really good they really bring life to the screen they really add to the tension and they also dispel the tension you know like madonna the director writer co-producer did a great job pretty much just creating this film period and i'm realizing that right at this moment because this film is nominated for multiple awards from all kinds of film festivals and celebrations and all that stuff and look man i had to nominate it for about to get my nomination for this film definitely it would be best picture best original screenplay best cinematography best editing best acting from colin farrell best supporting acting by brandon gleason and i wouldn't know what to give it hopefully it wins something it really deserves it it's a film that that really kind of like doesn't teach you about life i mean it shows you a slice of of a normal everyday life with crazy cast of characters but it also gives you a perspective of how some people just want to succeed and there are just some people who just want to live the simple life going to the pub every day having a pint or two with your homie or homies sing and then just go home and do it again it's it's like what's there to lose and that's kind of crazy too now before i go I just want to say that the cinematography is by Ben Davis. Editing is by Mikkel E. G. Nielsen. The music by Carter Burwell. Production companies, four film productions, Blueprint Pictures, TSG Entertainment, distributed by Searchlight Pictures. Hell to the yeah. My name is Ray Salazar. Follow me on Morning Shot Films, IG, and YouTube. Check out this podcast called Morning Real. I got more movies to come next week. He Got Game by Spike Lee, one of my favorite Spike Lee films. I've never reviewed a Spike Lee film. Man, this guy's crazy. I love his work. He likes to push boundaries, and I like that from any kind of artist. Let's go.